Hello, hello, hello. Hey. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Okay. Well, really quick before we start, who knows this famous footballer here. We have a little gift for the audience. We're gonna have him sign this. Oh, okay. Right, yeah. and then yeah, maybe yeah. should he kick it or throw it? I'm not sure. <laughs> what is more meta? That's it's more medically sound, I think. If you. <laughs> All right. To be very there interesting. If you kick it, uh, Laurie. if I kick it, we're not gonna get very far. So. <laughs> okay. Who's a big fan? Who? Want, in what direction? Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I have a big camera. pressure if I'm hitting the <laughs> camera instead of okay. throwing the ball. I'm not, so yeah, yeah. We have two balls. We need to throw one on the right, yeah, one on the left. Your choice, your choice. It's my <laughs> choice, okay. I don't know. I don't, I don't see any excitement, by the way, Yeah, guys. come uh, on, you guys. What, what's going on? <laughs> Nothing on the back. Do, you don't believe I can reach on the back? Thank you for the trust. So I'm throwing here. Okay, let's go. Oop. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Are you in the second one? Let's go on the on this <laughs> side. <laughs> Come on. Okay. <laughs> oh. Good. Good kick. Okay. Amazing. Got it. Great. <laughs> That's awesome. it. Awesome. That's it. I'm done <laughs> for today. No okay. Um, well, it's great to to sit down with you guys. Um, Alex, you're a longtime entrepreneur. In the late 90s, you launched an interactive tourism guide. Uh, you also created one of the largest online poker sites in France. And now you're focusing your attention on blockchain and sports. This is why we have this great duo up here. Talk to me really quick, what need did you see? Well, I, I've been an internet entrepreneur for 25 years. I had a hair at that time, uh, and I grew up with the technology since I'm six, more or less. I'm not a sports fan. I'm a geek, <laughs> rather, or a tech guy. And five years ago, we decided to launch Socials.com and uh, Chili's um, because there was a simple need. 99% of sports fans are not in the stadium not in a city, not even in a country of the team they are supporting. And the question for us at that time was, what can we create that is both valuable for a fan and scalable for a team? And so we invented this concept of fan tokens, fungible, um, and it picked up. Our first two teams was actually Juventus and uh, Paris Saint-Germain. And here we are, four and a half years later, we work with 170 teams all over the world, mm -hmm. and we really created a new link between the fans and the teams. Um, and talk to me a little bit about the concept behind fan tokens. So what do fans get? What exactly are they? F fan tokens are kind of a membership program uh, that are tokenized uh, in a way that you own a um, token of Juventus. I'll take that example today. You own a token of Juventus, and you will have been able to vote on a decision of what music is going to be played um, in the stadium when we score a goal. Or you could design if Alex were signed one day in another team, which number is going to have on his jersey. So anything that is not sports or business, in the middle, everything that is fan related, we think that we should give a fan a voice, a power, and that is translated through the technology. It's participatory to some degree. Totally. It's a, it's a community-based thing. A at the end, what made crypto successful till now is the community side. And what are the biggest community in the world besides sports? Nothing is bigger than sports. And you, you can love your team, but if you're based in, in Korea, in Japan, in Brazil, in Turkey, you, have, you don't have the same relationship uh, that someone who lives in the country of that team. Yeah. So we think that technology, blockchain for example, but Blockchain is just uh, the tech behind the product. The product is the fan token or the way to engage um, with the team. And uh, Alessandro, I mean, you have earned the title of one of the top footballers in the world, and this enables you to do a lot of things. For example, you have recorded music, you've opened restaurants, you, and correct me if I'm wrong, have you appeared in an Oasis music video? Y yes. Okay, all right. Yeah. Um, and you've partnered with Socio. So as someone who understands fan engagement in a different way, because you've not just played in Italy, you've played globally. You've played uh, around the world in Australia. You've also played in India. Um, what was it about this partnership? What was it about the fan base and the future of fans and how we view fan bases that was personal and professional to you? Well, starting from 
what Alex says, you know, I lead uh, with my own experience what he said, you know, I, I, w I went everywhere around the world from South America to uh, so North America, Asia, and of course Europe and playing playing football with, with my own team, 19 years with the Juventus. So I had the opportunity to see how this team and, and these sports can reach in terms of fans. You can, you can, I can have fans, me or the team, everywhere around the world. So, and also the experience when I play in Australia and India gave me a different vibes of what can be a fan. But as Alex say, you know, not all the time you have the opportunity to share time with your players or with your team. So the best thing is uh, that social is bringing now is exactly that kind of interaction. And uh, back in time, recently, unfortunately, what happened with the pandemic, you know, after the beginning, football started to play games again without fans. It wasn't the same atmosphere. If I was score a goal and with, with this empty stadium, it's not the same because you play, you know, as many football sports, big sports guys say, you play in order to perform, to compete, to win, and also to share that kind of emotion right. with not only your family or your teammates, but with the fans. It's the best thing that you can do in front of 80,000 people, score a winning goal and celebrate as crazy. You can do everything that you want. In that moment, yeah. they c they're going to forgive you, you know? <laughs> so, so that vibes is because of fans. And try to make as much as you can this connection, not only one way, so team, through social media especially, you know, team, share news and everything, but bringing a relationship in two ways where fans can decide some part of the game, it's, it's amazing. Uh, actually, talking about COVID, COVID was an accelerator for sports property all over the world to actually digitalization because for uh, six months, at some point, they had nobody in the stadium. And most of the teams asked themselves, what is our business model when we have nobody in the stadium? Well, it should be the same than when you have someone in the stadium, meaning that you need to acknowledge the fact that your fans are not just the fans in the stadium. And that was very interesting and was a big accelerator for us. Right. I mean, we saw this moment um, with Web3 and everybody home during COVID and saying, well, there's all these really interesting opportunities you had. I mean, I look back at uh, NBA Top Shop, right, which was doing incredibly well. This was the NFT sports market was doing incredibly well. But then if you look in even the last month or so, it hit a nearly two year low for monthly sales in October. That's down almost 50 percent from the month before. How do you make sure socios, because you guys are blockchain based, you are um, a a company based on these uh, these principles. How do you make sure that it's crypto winter proof that that fans who buy fan tokens aren't really left out to dry? I, I love that question. Actually, what happened in 2021 in terms of NFT based hype was mainly driven by the fact that Bitcoin went to the roof was $60,000 and there was a lot of money available. The reality is if you do not offer utility to your product, then of course it lacks interest or appetite. And I guess that's what's happening to some uh, sports NFT related project. In our case, every day we have more and more users coming and using the benefit of the fan token. Uh, it's not about the trading. It's not about the price. Um, trading is pretty high, though. But it's not about that. It's really about the fact that you are giving a value, value being not non-financial, but value being the utility. And Every day that passes, we have more utility to the fans. Why? Because now we have 300 employees, nine offices all over the world, and these guys are dedicated to give more to the fans thanks to the relationship we have with the 170 teams. What are the more interesting use cases you've seen when you talk about utility and value? Because utili utility has become a big buzzword in sure. Web3, so what's the actual... Um, the value that you guys have, have seen that's been the most successful with the community? I think two things matter for a fan. Uh, first question should be, what is a fan today? And, and, and actually, a fan is a sum of different tribes that consume sports differently, depends where they are based and how they want to engage with it. But for us, the utility is 
first the recognition, meaning that instead of being a passive fan, you are an active fan, meaning that you are not just a spectator, you participate, you vote, and you are recognized as such. Um, and then it's all the benefits and the rewards we are doing. So the more you are voting, the more you are logging every day or you're playing in the app, you're going to get rewards. Last year or this year, I think we are giving 17,000 uh, tickets all over the world. That's actually we had to develop a software to manage these uh, rewards. Um, so I it's not just about giving an image. We always joke about, oh, it's a JPEG for an NFT. But if there is no utility behind it, we believe it has less value. We focus on the value more than we focus on the rest. Alessandra, I saw, I read that you refused to offer the offer to retire the number 10 jersey in your honor. Um, and you said, uh, quote, hopefully I won't misquote this, um, <laughs> this way every child can dream one day of wearing it. And this is when you were leaving um, the team in Italy. And you wrote an open letter to your fans, uh, thanking them for two, almost two decades of support. And you said, above all what remains is fans, and from tomorrow on, I will no longer be a player, but I'll always be one of you. I get the sense it's not for folks like you, and there's a very small number of people who've reached this level of success in the sports industry, that relationship with their fans really is personal to some degree. Do you believe that technology and emerging tech can make it even more personal? And can you describe what this relationship with your fans has been like and how it's evolved throughout the years? Well, m my story with Juventus was particularly unique, in, you know, through the 19 years that I've been together. We grew up together when I was 18 till 37 with some of these fans, you know, I grew up and, and they grew up with, through me with uh, the biggest success that we can have as a football team through also a, a bigger crisis that uh, the club has in this, uh, in this, uh, in his uh, era, in this uh, story. So. The relationship with the fan was always something special because, you know, you, c you can reach success, you can have money, you have a lot of things, but, you know, when you have a people that really recognize who you are, in, and I'm not talking about an autograph and a photo, but the role that you had in, 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 the, in the club in a specific moment and, and cry for you and um, design tattoo on uh, their, their things, it's something that you say, okay, wait a minute, this is something more. And I was a fan as well. I, I was a, I'm passionate about the sports of, of, of football. So for me, everything was amplified. If, if a football player that I like says something or the team that uh, I was chaining do something specific, uh, my eyes were, were open. And now with technology, back in time, uh, unfortunately, it wasn't that kind of technology. Now through social media, through different kind of platforms, you can reach more your fan and you can share something more with them and this is as a fan view it's it's technically amazing i was born in a close little village close to venice and never had a chance to see juventus in my life even if i was in italy imagine somebody in korea japan or, or in argentina it's it, you know so that kind of connection that you can end through social.com and the rewards that uh, you know uh, Alex was saying, and then the decision that you can make through the technology that we can use today, of, of course, give you more uh, interaction. And uh, as we say, active interaction. That is one of the biggest change. You know, not only passive receiving news or whatever, but acting interaction where you can decide things, so you can vote for something, and you be part of the g of the your team in a different way. Yeah. Um, so she's recently partnered with the San Francisco 49ers. Um, what, what does that partnership look like? What's the U.S. market strategy when you look at this company and like U.S. market now five, ten years from now, what is the future? I guess the U.S. and the rest of the world in terms of sports is, are very different. It's a different sports, different lobbying, different league management, uh, different regulation related to crypto. So. We, we actually split almost the company in two. There is the rest of the world and the US. In the rest of the world, we are very active. We, we have, as I said, nine offices, and we, we, we work with 100 plus teams. In US, we have 50 teams, I think, we've signed. Um, for now, it's more about education, because in the US, the regulatory framework in crypto is slightly different than in the rest of the world, in a way that there is not yet a clear 
uh, framework. There is not yet a clear guidance. So we have to wait and see a little bit. So for now, we are investing, uh, partnering with all of these teams, putting socials a little bit everywhere, but it's still very early stage for us. Uh, you guys recently invested 100 million in the digital arm of the Barcelona football team. This is also at a time, and we should paint the picture, like things aren't, this is a crypto winter we're entering, so things aren't 100% great for this environment. And so you've put in 100 million uh, to accelerate its Web3 strategy. And, and I thought you said something interesting to me when we were doing a pre-call for this. You said, we keep continuing to invest when others don't. It's a leap of faith. It doesn't mean we're always right. Looking at your background, and not to kind of psychoanalyze you a little bit, but it's that time of the interview because we have a couple minutes left. Um, your last company was the largest online poker site in France. You talk about socio, you talk about building it at the, when you started building this company, it was during a bear market four years ago. Is there something about you that just likes gambling? <laughs> no, building. You know, uh, I mean, we, we launched Socios, or we created Socios during the bear market of 2018, mm -hmm. and here we are four years later. Uh, I, I think it's when there is less money available that you are the most efficient. Uh, and right now, um, you know, this so-called crypto winter is a blessing. There is less money available, so there is less distraction, there is less noise, there is less companies trying to reach uh, clubs to, uh, to offer whatever uh, amount. So for us, it's, it's great. We did invest $100 million in, um, to get 25% of the digital arm of the new digital arm of Barca. And the goal here, again, it's a bet. Of course, it's a leap of faith. And yes, of course, we may gonna lose it. As much as everything we are doing every day, it may gonna fail. But like in any entrepreneurship-driven uh, uh, business, if you don't try, you cannot succeed. And you know, there is this thing like trial, uh, try and um, fail fast. It's a little bit that. Is we, we need to try things as much as we can in order to give it a chance. It doesn't mean that what we do is perfect, but at least if we are consistent in our vision of giving more to the fan, giving more revenue stream to the teams, and hoping to enhance that relationship, then it's a win-win. So a superpower you would say is that you are able to fail a lot, but just fail quickly. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alessandro, What's the hardest lesson you ever learned on the field? Um, accepting losing. I'm very competitive. <laughs> I know we can come here or in front of the microphone, and in front of the media, and say, "Well, yeah," but inside you are dying. If you lose, if you lose a, a final, and it happened to me, if you lose a game, if you lose even a friendly game, uh, I've got really pissed off. So, went through that. And, and, see, and try to understand when the older people, you know, older players, teammates tell you, Yo, yeah, it's okay, it's done, let's move on, let's work on the next things. Yeah, okay, but when you're young, you don't realize that. So you go crazy. Now that I'm not that young, uh, <laughs> I can say the same things to the youngest one. It's a part of the process. So as much as you, as fast as you learn this kind of uh, uh, accepting these kind of things, I think is one of the best lessons that you can have. How did you begin to accept loss? What were you, did you do anything specific? Well, what is great in sport, especially in football, is there's no other thing that you can do. Uh, if you lose the game, if you miss a penalty, uh, or if you miss an opportunity, you cannot go back and make a rewind. Okay, if I did that, no. It's many, th many things is like this, by, uh, by the way. But in some other, you can adjust. In, in sports, you can't. So the good part is you have a three, day, three days later another game, one week later another game. So you need to start to understand how to turn the page. Clean, review, analyze, turn the page. And it's, it's a kind of the process that sometimes is easy to do, sometimes not. You know, you're regarded as one of the greatest players of your generation. Alex, you're a, a successful entrepreneur many times over. What role do you think failure has played in success? And if you could give us like a super specific story, I think it's always interesting to hear um, how specific failures have paved the way. I mean, very, very similar to Alex, I guess you, you have to embrace failure. Failure is part of the success. There is no way you can be a good entrepreneur or manager if you only succeed. That doesn't exist anyway. Um, I, I'm not shy or afraid to say that you have to embrace 
crying a Saturday night because suddenly you don't know if you're going to make it the Monday morning to pay the salaries or, or something like that. It happens for me over the, the last 25 years. I went up, I went down, I went bankrupt when I was 21. Uh, and What was that like? Uh, painful. Right. Uh, but it was a process. Uh, it was uh, what helped me to be wha who, I mean, who I am today and where I am today. Uh, and that's naive to think that um, creating a company is just good stuff. It's actually mainly bad stuff, and every day there is a problem, and then you have to try to fix it. People will see on social media uh, only the good stuff, but <laughs> trust me, at home it's different. We're in this very interesting moment in Web3 with NFTs, with crypto. Um, I think that it's going to be such an interesting next five to ten years when we talk about a new internet infrastructure being built out, one that enables fans to participate and own uh, when it comes to a team. There are also going to be many scams. Are you long on Web3? I know, you know, will the word NFT even exist in five years or will it just be some kind of infrastructure? I think it, first of all NFT is a tech not a product so as long as we build product using blockchain technology that are relevant then of course it will always be there. There will be a lot of scam or attempt of surfing on the hype during the World Cup so people have to be aware of that and I'm trying to fight it publicly sometimes um, but yes of course I, I was there in 1995, 1996 when people were laughing at the internet. I was there in 1991, in 2001 etc. Um, it's the same here. We feel the same people that, are, uh, that don't want to embrace it, but it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. It's happening already. Any message for your fans? I mean, uh, thank you for your support. <laughs> uh, through letters, this is what happened you know, 30 years ago. They write me letters, and I reply the letters. I remember my dad collecting all the letters, you know, wow. boxes of letters. Now the letter is substituted with, you know, with the... Uh, email, Instagram messages, Twitter, whatever it is. And now you have also socials.com to interact uh, with myself. So it's crazy how leave this moment, you know, and coming from that era was where nothing happened, when we didn't have even a phone, a cellular phone, you know, coming through this one. So all the process was amazing. And, and definitely the, the, the best part that I remember, one of the best part is, of course, the biggest trophy that I won when you win the, the World Cup it's nothing better than this as a sports guy as a football guy you win the World Cup is the one you are 23 in every four years it's so pr priceless it's but also you remember the goal that you score you remember the good time and you remember the moment where the people really cheer you up when when, when they give you a standing ovation because what you did or when you clap when they clap their hands because you got injury, you need to walk off, walk off uh, from the field. Or, or when you are in a really tough moment and they encourage you. So that's kind of relationship. It's very, very important as sports in, in, in the football. For my opinion, it's one of the key was well, in, my, in my things. That's why I built a special relationship with my fans. Wonderful. You guys, thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thanks.